and welcome back welcome back to our series on this beautiful book the way of the superior man if you've not seen our previous episodes in this series we're doing a chapter by chapter read through of this book and doing a little discourse at the end so you can apply the beautiful wisdom that's in this book uh, into your own life so yeah if you've not heard the book the way of the superior man by david Dieter, the, the subtitle is a spiritual guide to mastering the challenges of women work and sexual desire I would dare say it's just one of the most prolific men's books of all time, especially in navigating the challenges of, of life, uh, both with, uh, in relationships and, and just, just in life at large. And you'll see why uh, in the next chapter, chapter 11, if you don't know your purpose, discover it now. And uh, I will probably do, because this chapter is quite short and the next chapter flows in from it, I'll probably also read chapter 12 before I do the discourse today. So, chapter 11. If you don't know your purpose, discover it now. Without a conscious life purpose, a man is totally lost, drifting, adapting to events rather than creating events. Without knowing his life purpose, a man lives a weakened, impotent existence perhaps eventually even becoming sexually impotent or prone to mechanical or disinterested sex. The core of your life is your purpose. Everything in your life, from your diet to your career, must be aligned with your purpose if you are to act with coherence and integrity in the world. If you know your purpose, your deepest desire, then the secret of success is to discipline your life so that you support your deepest purpose and minimize distractions and detours. But if you don't know your deepest desire, then you can't align your life to it. Everything in your life is disassociated from your core. You go to work, but since it's not connected to your deepest purpose, it's just a job, a way to earn money. You go through your daily round with your family and friends, but each moment is just another in a long string of moments, going nowhere, not inherently profound. Disconnected from your core, you feel weak. This empty feeling will undermine not only your erection in the world, but your erection with your woman too. However, when you know your true purpose, which is your core desire in life, each moment can become a full expression of your core desire. Every instant of career, every instant of intimacy is filled with the power of your heart purpose. You are no longer just going through the motions at work and with your woman, but you are living the truth of your life and giving your gifts of love moment by moment. Such a life is complete unto itself in every instant. The superior man is not seeking for fulfillment through work or woman because he is already full. For him, work and intimacy are opportunities to give his gifts and be vanished in the bliss of giving. That's the end of chapter 11, and I'm about to move on to chapter 12, but I would just say that last point that he made there, so many guys are feeling unfulfilled, dissatisfied, living for the weekend. Most of the time it's because they don't know any better. Extreme cases of this are guys who end up getting cheated on by their girl, guys who just get passed up for jobs, Guys who end up feeling bitter and resentful at the world. And it's because they're doing what they're supposed to do in the textbook, which is, you know, I got a job, I got a wife, I, I, you know, I, I seem to do all the right things. But then why do I not feel appreciated? Why does it not feel rewarding to me? That's because it's lacking the magnetism and energy and vitality that comes when you are internally aligned to doing something that you love. When you are internally aligned to doing something that you love, you go for it 
you're giving it everything you're giving it all your creativity you are alive and you're feeling fulfilled even in the daily on the daily in the pursuit of it you're feeling alive and you're feeling fulfilled and people feel that and it's magnetic it's like an X factor and people want to be around it and not only is it fulfilling and satisfying if that's not enough it also brings out the best version of you the version of you that's the most driven the most creative the most energetic the most magnetic so as a result people want to be around you and you get rewarded for it so that's why we align our life around our true purpose and the next chapter while this chapter was called if you don't know your purpose discover it now the next chapter is called be willing to change everything in your life and in this chapter he breaks down how you can discover your purpose which we'll speak more about afterwards also a man must be prepared to give 100 percent to his purpose fulfill his karma or dissolve it and then let go of that specific form of living he must be capable of not knowing what to do with his life entering a period of unknowingness and waiting for a vision or a new form of purpose to emerge these cycles of strong specific action followed by periods of not knowing what the hell is going on are natural for a man who is shedding layers of karma in his relaxation into truth as you open yourself to living at your edge your deepest purpose will slowly begin to make itself known in the meantime you will experience layer after layer of purposes each one getting closer and closer to the fullness of your deepest purpose it is as if your deepest purpose is at the center of your being and it is surrounded by layers of concentric circles each layer being a lesser purpose your life consists of penetrating each circle from the outside towards the center the outer purposes are often the purposes you have inherited or learned from your parents or childhood experiences perhaps your father was a fi fireman so you wanted to be a fireman or in reaction to him you decided to be an arsonist in any case the outer circles the purposes you often apply to early in life are most likely only distant approximations of your deepest purpose if your deepest purpose is to meditate and realize God you might find that before you totally dedicate yourself to this practice you must work your way through concentric circles of playing with sexual partners using drugs getting married raising children developing a career and finally having dissolved your fascination to and need to do all of that getting down to the business of full-time meditation as you dissolve each layer and move towards the center you will find more and more be living true to your deepest purposes and then your deepest heart purpose whatever it is in every moment however you probably are not living your deepest purpose yet you probably need to burn off the karma or fulfill the need of the present purpose by which you are fascinated and distracted it's easy to feel disappointed in life success is never as fulfilling as you think it's going to be but there's a reason for this successfully completing a lesser purpose doesn't feel good for very long because it's simply preparation for advancing towards a greater embodiment of your deeper purpose each purpose each mission is meant to be fully lived to the point where it becomes empty boring and useless then it should be discarded this is a sign of growth but you may mistake it as a sign of failure for instance you may take a business project work at it for several years and then suddenly find yourself totally disinterested you know that if you stayed with it for another few years you would reap much greater financial reward than if you left the project now but the project no longer calls you you no longer feel interested in the project 
You have developed skills over the last few years working on this project, but it hasn't yet come to fruition. You may wonder, now that you have the skills, should you stick with it and bring the project to fruition, even if the work feels empty to you? Well, maybe you should stick with it. Maybe you are bailing out too soon, afraid of success or failure, or just too lazy to persevere. This is one possibility. Ask your close men friends if they feel you are simply losing steam, wimping out, or afraid to bring your project into completion. If they feel like you are bailing out too soon, stick with it. However, there is a possibility that you have completed your karma in this area. It is possible that this was one layer of purpose which you have now fulfilled on the way to another layer of purpose closer to your deepest purpose. Among the signs of fulfilling or completing a layer of purpose are the following. Number one, you suddenly have no interest whatsoever in a project or mission that was previously motivating you highly. Number two, you feel surprisingly free of any regrets whatsoever for starting the project or for ending it. Number three, even though you may not have the slightest idea of what you are going to do next, you feel clear, unconfused, and especially unburdened. Number four, you feel an increase of energy at the prospect of ceasing your involvement in the project. Number five, the project seems almost silly, like collecting shoelaces or wallpapering your house with gas station receipts. Sure, you could do it, but why would you want to? If you experience these signs, it is probably time to stop working on this project. You must end your involvement impeccably, however, making sure that there are no loose ends and that you do not burden anyone else's life by stopping your involvement. This might take some time, but it is important that this layer of your purpose ends cleanly and does not create any new karma or obligation that will burden you or others in the future. The next layer of your unfolding purpose may make itself clear immediately. More often, however, it does not. After completing one layer of purpose, you might not know what to do with your life. You know that the old project is over for you, but you're not sure of what's next. At this point, you must wait for a vision. There's no way to rush this process. You may need to get an in intermediary job to hold you over until your next layer of purpose makes itself clear, or perhaps you have enough money to simply wait. But in any case, it's important to open yourself to a vision of what is next. You stay open to a vision of your deeper purpose by not filling your time with distractions. Don't watch TV or play computer games. Don't go out drinking beer with your friends every night or start dating a bunch of women. Simply wait. You may wish to go on a retreat in a remote area and be by yourself. Whatever it is that you decide to do, consciously keep yourself open and available to receiving a vision of what is next. It will come. When it does, it usually won't be a detailed vision. You will probably have a sense of what direction to move in, but the practical steps might not make themselves clear. When the impulse begins to rise, act on it. Don't wait for the details. Learn by trial and error what it is you are to do. For instance, perhaps you are a stockbroker and then finished that particular layer of purpose. You saved up some money, so now you are waiting for a vision of your next layer. After three weeks of going crazy, not knowing what you're going to do with your life, you begin to feel that you want to work with people. You begin to fantasize about using your financial skills to help people set up their own businesses. You have a few friends who have great intentions to save the world, but they are lousy businessmen and can't seem to get it off the ground. So you call them and offer your help. As you help them, you continually feel for the groove of your purpose. You might have a few false starts, but eventually you find dozens of non-for-profit groups are telephoning you asking for your advice. 
It feels as if the universe is supporting you in this direction. You have no idea whether you can earn a living doing this, but it feels right doing so. So you apply yourself fully to it. You give your gift 100% without holding anything back. Soon, a wealthy man finds out about what you're doing. He admires your total commitment and your orientation to serve others. He becomes your patron. Now you are set. You have a good income. You are doing what you really want to do and you are helping others. You love what you do and so you generate love in those who come in contact with you. Your life feels full. And then one day, a few years later, it's finished. This particular layer of purpose dissolves. And the cycle begins again and again until you have penetrated all the layers of your deepest purpose. Then you act fully until that purpose too is dissolved into the bliss of love that you are. So there's a lot in uh, that chapter, but that chapter very much is one of the most important chapters I've ever read in my entire life. It, it, it really guided me at a crucial time in my life, 10 years ago, uh, and it guides me to this day. So let me help you understand. If you are feeling these symptoms of not feeling fulfilled with what you're currently doing, feeling dissatisfied, not feeling much energy, just more so going through the motions, and, and more so living for the weekend, it's an indicator that you're not actually aligned with your purpose. Now, here's the wonderful thing that I have found from experience. Our purpose comes, our purpose is actually ever present and our purpose pervades us through life. Here's what that means. Throughout my life, when I really reflect on it, I really enjoyed getting guidance from mentors and I really enjoyed giving guidance to others. I also had a, there, there's certain themes that were, have been reoccurring throughout my whole life. I've also throughout my whole life cared about building wealth. I've cared about spiritual development. My life has demonstrated that theme over, over 10, 20 years. I've cared about uh, team leadership. Uh, you know, when I was 18, I joined the army and I learned how to be an infantry, infantry officer. Then after my time in the army, I was in corporate and I was a project manager, again with a team, usually mostly of men. Uh, and, then, and now, you know, for the last six years, I've had my own coaching business and I lead men. So I have themes in my life which have always been the same. And what, what you can do is you can think about, you know, there's some free tools you can get. You can contact me for one if you like. You can message me on Instagram for a free purpose tool. But what you can do is you can examine your life and, and the themes that have seem to have pervaded your life. Not, 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 not so much negative themes, but things that you love, things that you tend to gravitate towards, things that you get energy at the thought of doing them. Energy is one of the most important clues that he gives in that chapter. There are, when you're not sure what you want to do, think about what will actually give you the energy a sense of energy by you doing it. Think about what direction you can go that will give you a sense of energy if you were to go down that direction. That's what you can do when you're not sure what you, you want to do. And what you find, by the way, is in these periods where you feel completely lost, when you can sense that thing, that, that, that little one thing that gives you a sense of energy, when you start breathing your life energy into it, it's like an ember that you're breathing and turning into a flame. Because the more time, the more attention, the more energy you give it, the more that specific thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it lights the way for your path. So I will give you a practical example of that. When I first started my coaching business, I did not know that I wanted to do coaching. I just knew that it, it gave me energy to share exactly what I'm doing now, just sharing lessons, uh, sharing things with people. 
that's what that's all I knew that that's actually where my coaching business started I was in corporate uh, but I wanted to share on Instagram uh, the, the things that I was learning <laughs> and uh, and I started to as I was doing that I started to have young guys coming to me asking me for advice and so then I would you know and so it's like that that ember become because starts to become a flame and and I'm enjoying giving people advice and then I'm doing that now for a while and then before you know it you know I start to sp I'm, I'm also interested in building wealth so I'm pursuing different ways of building wealth and then I meet good friends who are like-minded and then they tell me Dim you know there are people out there who do coaching businesses who have businesses where they they help guys full-time and I thought that's cool let me try that you know but it all actually started by me doing what I loved and giving energy into what I loved so what I love is like reading and learning and receiving guidance and so I and then I wanted to share because I like to contribute so then I would share it and then people would ask me for advice and I discovered that I liked giving advice uh, and then that turned into coaching so love is the answer energy love is energy and energy so so when you think of what you know especially if you're feeling like you're living a bit of a mundane life or you're in a rut or, or you're feeling stagnant ask yourself what direction can you go that gives you a sense of energy and start to breathe life into that direction start to go down that direction and more ideas come to you and uh, just like that, you start to find that there's certain themes in your life that you've always loved. The more that you make life about what you love, the more love and fulfillment comes into your life. The more you make life about your, what gives you energy, the more energy you find in life. And the more vitality and inspiration and motivation and creativity uh, you feel in life. So yeah, if you're at a junction right now where you feel like you're not exactly sure which direction you want to go or you're not really happy or satisfied with where you're currently at ask yourself the question what could I do what does give me a sense of energy if I did it by the way when I asked this question 10 years ago when I was in corporate not happy the answer was I wanted to quit corporate and go to Africa <laughs> pretty wild not very practical but it's what I did I went to Africa and I followed what would give me a sense of energy in a time when I didn't feel like I had any energy to do anything. And uh, what also gave me a sense of energy was reading books like this. So I did that for six months while I was away, reading personal development books, building homes in Africa. When I got back, I had to find a job and the, the wisdom that I learned in these books helped me go from earning 60 grand a year to 200 grand a year when I was 25 and I was like wow these books are this is real like this this stuff actually helps so so then I'm like uh, my initial plan was look let me just build up a property portfolio become financially free through property and then I can go around the world building orphanages for the rest of my life in third world countries and and so I, I was kind of doing that building up a big property portfolio earning well through corporate and reading personal development books like this and I was learning things and I was sharing it on my Instagram and young guys came to me asking me for advice and that's what that's what ended up with the idea of hey why didn't I leave corporate and try my hand at a coaching business and there we here we are six years later so that's the story and that's actually how powerful this very chapter was on me so the key is ask yourself which direction can you go in which gives you a sense of energy which direction can you go in which makes you actually excited or fulfilled or some sense of motivation even if it's subtle the more you go in that direction the more motivation and energy and fulfillment and love you find make your life a masterpiece of love of fulfillment uh, of giving of giving in love to the things that you love to do so it's making me emotional to talk about so so i hope you enjoyed this chapter if you found benefit uh in this chapter please do share it with someone else uh, who you believe might also enjoy it or find benefit from i'd love for you to also connect with me i'm on instagram my name is dim happer 
I, I do my coaching programs primarily in Australia, uh, but I would love for you to connect with me. And all right, my friends, until the next chapter, I'll see you soon.